Hello, all of you. A very good afternoon. Okay. So today we have with us uh, Sidhan Santhalya. Uh, I'll just give a quick brief background. Most of you know him already. But uh, so Sidhat is currently working as a senior actuarial analyst at Swiss Re in Bangalore. And he graduated in economics from St. Xavier's College in 2022. He has a core expertise in using actuarial modeling like softwares, uh, softwares like Axis, RAFM, and Profit. He has worked on IP Life, LTC products across regions like uh, ANZ, LA, CA, Asia, UK, and many more. He has also briefly worked on IFRS 17 with close to 2.5 years of experience in the life domain. He is an associate member of IFA and has 12 actual papers under his hat. And I'm pretty sure he, he will be clearing his essay paper very soon. And soon uh, he will be giving his fellowship speech. He is also a faculty at uh, Christ University, Bangalore. And also, he is teaching CS1 Paper B with Actuators Educational Institute. He is one of the most, um, I will say, bright and intelligent students that I have had in my classes. He used to finish all his work when I used to teach him uh, Paper B, CM1, Excel. I used to see him sitting. I, I used to think that he is not doing anything. But when I used to go to him, I used to see that everything is already done. And same paper B, he is a brilliant, brilliant person. And today he will be uh, guiding us as to he got 95 in CS1. So he and he also scored great marks in paper B. I remember in Excel, how much you scored Siddharth in paper B? 95, right? Something around that. Yeah. So he, he has always been a very, very amazing and good and intelligent student. So today he will be telling us um, how. Uh, he managed to score such great marks along with economics in his college because balancing college along with uh, actual science, sometimes I've seen along with uh, when you have full day, almost full day of college, like I think 9 to 4, 9 to 4, 30, you had your college. So how to balance that, how to score that. And when you start working, obviously, how to consistently complete all the papers. And then uh, he will be also guiding us about CS1 paper. So, Siddharth, you can go ahead. Um, hello, Shawangiri. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot, Shawangiri, for those kind words. It uh, seems uh, like very hunky dory when you hear it like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, all thanks to uh, Ravin Bhaiya and you and actuators who have always been there like a rock. Uh, yeah. Uh, helped me around whenever I needed anything. Yeah. That's about it. Uh, so, yeah, let's jump right into it. Um, uh, so to talk about, uh, like, I'll, I'll divide uh, the uh, session into the first few parts. Uh, uh, Shwangiti, feel free to jump in if you want to at any point in time. Uh, so I was first uh, looking forward to start with something around how to manage college, uh, uh, college studies and actual studies, right? Uh, same goes for everyone else. So if you all feel that you have anything uh, to put in or ask anything, please raise your hands. We'll take in questions here. Yeah? Uh, so the key thing being, uh, you have 24 hours in a day, right? And at the end of the day, you need to give some time to yourself as well. And, uh, you need to manage your studies, both college and whatever extra course you're pursuing along with that. Right? So the key thing that comes in here is managing your time very effectively, making sure you know where your time is going. Right? Uh, at the end of the day, what happens is a lot of the people say that they put in these many hours, uh, but uh into say uh studying something but they're not really sure whether that time got utilized in studying or not uh i've been through phases as well where maybe i started five or six hours but i couldn't generate an output worth of five to six hours right so the key thing here while studying for n number of hours is to make sure that you are generating the maximum output out of this n hours you are studying right at that comes in with like studying with full uh, focus, studying with full consistency, making sure there are as few distractions as possible. Yeah. Uh, so uh, managing college. Yeah. So you know, like what your college timings are, right? Uh, you know where you can find out time 
outside of those college timings uh, and then find out time for your study, right? Uh, you need to make sure that you're making a very uh, crisp schedule for yourself, right? Uh, you need to make sure that you're following that sh uh, schedule right, uh, as closely as possible, right? You need to be at times flexible with your schedule as well. What do I mean? We need to be flex flexible with your uh, schedule. For example, there'll be uh, uh, like things that are out of your control. Say, right, exams from college is coming and you might have certain event that you want to participate. You can't let go of that. Uh, there can be n number of things, right? So you need to make sure you are taking enough uh, uh, like margins for adverse deviation, as we call in the actual world, right? So make sure if you require, say, four hours for a particular thing, uh, you you are uh, like allocating sufficient amount of time to it, right? And uh, then you are able to follow it uh, very uh, like as closely as possible. And you always have like margins there in case there is some slight deviation from it. So for example, if you're planning, say, uh, on seven days a week, if you're planning, say, 30 to 35 hours of study with it, uh, for it, make sure you're blocking 40 hours for yourself to study that thing out, right? Because at the end of the day, we are all humans. We tend to miss out on 10% of our schedule, right? So don't make a schedule so strict as well that it is humanly impossible to achieve that, yeah? Uh, and at the same time, given that exams are right around the corner, uh, you have, what, I think, 9, 10, 10 is uh, when CS1 is. So. Uh, you have exactly 30 days now. Uh, we need to be sure that we are reserving enough time for our studies and then following as closely as possible, right? So it's about uh, first making a schedule, yeah? Then, uh, like, and that, that that's where your time management skills come in, right? Uh, you need to be sure you can carve out time wherever possible. Uh, and I need not dictate you on uh, what needs to, uh, what requires your time and what not requires your time, right? then it's about uh, finding the right places where you can carve out time and then be uh, particularly disciplined to follow it, right? Uh, once you are following that, you'll see that effect uh, maybe a week or 10 days after that, when you'll see that you have already covered a large portion of syllabus, right? Uh, honestly, if I'll, uh, I'll tell you that if you follow 10 days worth of uh, strictly disciplined uh, 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 timetable that's been made for you, you'll uh, you'll like get to a point where you'll feel comfortable with the syllabus, right? And then the confidence starts building up, and then it will be easier for you to prepare for your exam, right? Uh, having said that, uh, like like I I know like most many of you would also be working here, right? Uh, so working and studying is a different ball game altogether as compared to like college and uh, studying right because you have a lot of factors that come in now which are not which are not in play while you're in college uh, you have say deadlines to meet you have a number of things to get done um, and still at the end of the day you might feel like i can work more or i might not work more right and monday to friday for people who have uh, uh, like office on saturday as well it's 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 all together different but because then you just have sunday on a schedule where there's nothing as such, no other external engagement. So uh, again, if you are a working uh, professional, you need to find out time uh, both in the morning and in the evening if that works for you, right? Here are different things might work for different people. Someone's a night owl, they can uh, stretch in the night and um, get more study done during the night, right? Uh, someone can uh, like have more time allocated during the morning, right? It also depends on uh, what your office timings are, but again, you need to find at least two hours, two and a half hours on a weekday. And believe me, uh, I've seen uh, pressure and peak periods during my work uh, hours as well. And uh, two hours is something that we can pull out. Like it's it's difficult. Uh, you'll be really cramped, uh, especially towards the last month. But yeah, it becomes important to uh, like carve out that time out of schedule and on weekends, you obviously have to give much more time. So uh, in effect, you can, uh, even a working professional can in fact pull out 30 hours a week. And that uh, if you if you consistently pull out for the last four weeks prior to exams, um, you'll be, you, you should be able to ace your exams, right? Uh, 
yeah uh shivangi if you wanted to add anything there yes so i feel that um, what all what like all the points that you have mentioned you have more or less covered all the points mm -hmm. just that i feel uh, that um, one thing to add over here is definitely consistency and since now we just have one month approximately let's say one month only for the september so just specifically can you say that what can we do in this next one month uh, right. for like, suppose anyone um mm -hmm. worst case scenario i'm taking for a student mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. has let's say suppose in let let us be very specific and talk about cs1 paper b has only done 20% of the syllabus because I have some students who have messaged me that I'm just completed our programming basics and maybe I'm in probability distribution. So how to go about that? Got it. So uh, see, paper B is again something uh, like since I first split it into paper and paper B, paper B forms a hefty portion of your marks as well. So you need to be able to score well in that portion of your syllabus as well. Uh, two prerequisites here. Yeah. Before you uh like consistently start practicing certain chapters in paper b yeah uh, your paper a corresponding uh logic concept should be clear right so that is something that you must make sure that while you're starting with a particular portion in paper b uh uh like you 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 know that concept very well in your uh, paper a uh, chapters as well yeah and that's something we ensure in our regular classes as well, that whenever we start a particular topic in paper B, we make it a point to maybe discuss about that paper A concept for five to 10 minutes so that uh, we are all on the same page. We know what the topic is and it helps you solve that same exercise or get to the same questions pretty easily. Yeah. The next thing that you need to make sure is, again, similar to paper A, no surprises here as well, that you need to be really consistent. You need to make sure that you are taking out time every day to practice paper B exercises. The Institute has been very kind enough uh, to provide you uh, like uh, exercise distributed for each chapter, right? And that uh, very well covers all functions that can be examined during the uh, uh, during your exams as well. So uh, you need to make sure that you are very clear with all the functions that are getting used, all the uh, like how a particular code in R works, right? So what is the programming language at the end of the day? You're trying to communicate to the computer. The computer also only understands zeros and ones, right? So a programming language is in a way that uh, is a way you interact with a computer, a language that the computer also understands and you also understand, right? So you need to be uh, like clear about how that language is working, right? Like what is the modus operandi of that language, yeah? And believe me, R is quite simple, basic English, right? So it is easy to understand, easy to pick it up. But what, what is an issue here is, the key issue that comes in here is that there are many functions that are getting introduced in every chapter, right? So there's a new function in probability distributions. You have a whole set of functions. When you jump to CLT, conditional expectations, linear models, confidence intervals, hypothesis assessing, you have a whole set of functions that come in, right? Again, understanding what are the key functions, what are the key arguments in each of the functions, and making sure you have practiced all of these exercises on your own. Yeah. For example, if you're having regular classes, if you're all if you're watching the videos, right, that gives you one round of practice for that particular exercise. Yeah. You get to understand what are the functions that are getting used and how that uh, like exercise is working. Right. Once you have understood that, it's time for you. To solve that exercise on your own without looking at the hints, without looking at the solutions, right? That uh, helps you understand what is your retention power with respect to that exercise. Yeah. While you are solving all these exercises on your own, this is the right time for also uh, for you to also mark exercises where you st got stuck again, right? Once you mark those exercises, you identify your weak points, right? You identify where you are getting stuck. Yeah. And these are the points that you need to come back for a third time as well, right? So this is this strategy particular work particularly worked for me. I remember watching either videos or attending ma'am's classes, uh, like uh, and then solving those questions for the first time. Then coming back 
like solving the same exercises maybe with a gap of one day or maybe uh, like uh, whatever like whenever i did find a time uh, after that i solved those exercises where i got stuck where the retention was not there i used to mark those exercises and after completing all the exercises or after completing a milestone say after completing four chapters or five chapters i used to get back to those marked portions right you need to be then completely sure about uh, whether those marked portions are uh, like uh, then you are able to again understand those or not right uh, once you are through with these two or three rounds then what i suggest is usually getting either to the y1 or y2 assignments uh, which is basically uh, a combination of uh, questions from various chapters, something of the sort of how a paper B exam paper looks like, right? Uh, or uh, jumping into past question papers. So you must solve either one or two past question papers or either of our mocks to get an understanding of what an R uh, like paper looks like. Yeah. In that, you'll able you be able to understand uh, like how you are able how you, how you're solving those questions in an exam setting and whether you are quick enough or not right uh, again uh, like going back to the point of being quick enough right so it's really important to be quick in your paper b exams okay so make sure you are being as efficient as possible when you're typing out codes yeah uh, use things that are available in art for example tab things drop downs argument presets uh, try to remember what place arguments stand for what you should not go to the help text and look for the same thing again and again. If it helps you, just prepare a uh, like uh, like for people who are writing learners. You it might help for you to uh, prepare a list of the new functions that you are learning and then just writing what that stands for. Yeah. So again, different learning te techniques. Yeah, there might be different things that specifically work for you. But the main thing is practice, right? So keep practicing the same thing and again and again. Yeah, till you get to a point that you are. Uh, crystal clear with it you remember it very well yeah and uh, make sure you are up to speed with what the exam requires you to be right so that is again very crucial lastly understanding how rules works uh, rules in the sense like how should you submit your answer scripts right so there's a certain way in how uh, paper b answers are submitted right uh, uh, so you need to be very clear with that how that works uh, I guess there's a very good video that was prepared by Shivangi uh, uh, that covers how paper B uh, submissions are made. So that needs to be kept in mind as well. Yeah, I think that covers paper B. Sorry, I think there was a question. Yeah. And uh, specifically going back uh, to a student who has stay started just on probability distributions. Uh, believe me, if you give 15 days consistently every day, two hours, uh, and keep solving those exercises, right? If you watch the videos and keep solving those exercises, you can cover all the chapters very well, right? Um, it, it will take two hours a day, 15, next 15 days, and you can very well cover, cover, uh, like R programming, given that R has a very steep learning curve. When it, when I say it has a steep learning curve, what I mean is, uh, it's quick to pick up, right? Uh, you'll see that the language is quite similar to English, yeah. So it's quite easy to pick up in that sense. Sorry, yeah, Nandini, go ahead. Nandini, are you asking something? Yeah, feel free to ask on the chat box as well. Uh, Laksha, number of attempts in an exam, attempt to career. See, once you have started working, um, um, like the number of attempts as such uh, don't really matter, right? People don't look into, don't really ask you in the actuarial field at how many times did you attempt this paper, right? It matters how many paper, like how many papers you have cleared or what work do you have. Uh, but it is a very good advantage, a very big plus, a very big advantage to have as many papers as possible uh, under you, uh, under your name when you are applying for jobs, right? Because uh, in today's world, uh, the actual space job market is getting as competitive as possible. Yeah. Uh, people have started giving papers in their college, um, uh, along with their colleges, being a four year graduation degree now, people do. Try giving six to eight papers, yeah. 
so it is uh it is good uh, to like have as many papers as possible but don't really worry about the number of attempts that you've taken it might be very well possible that you're taking an attempt extra or a couple of attempts extra um it really won't matter 10 years down the line right when you're a fellow it won't really matter 10 to 10 years down the line sorry Hitachi, yeah, how should I proceed if you've done till, uh, point estimation? Yeah. Uh, so we have something uh, towards the end where we'll cover, like, uh, um, like if you are a, like, what is the plan for the next uh, 15 days? So as to say, uh, as to how we should like prepare ourselves, it will also talk about our regular classes that we'll be having. Uh, that pretty much covers your question as well. So we'll get to that as well. What should we do for the lab during revision of past year's papers? Um, I usually I'll personally talk about my strategy, what worked for me. Yeah. So what specifically worked for me was uh, like, again, uh, during the last few days when I was solving the revision booklets, um, I marked questions that I got stuck solving the first time around, right? Or questions that I took a lot of time in, right? I shouldn't have taken that much time in that particular question. Or if you have not marked such questions, it, like it's a good time to just skim through the booklets and does, like and uh, i'm sure that you will spot something that you took maybe great amount of time to solve or you oh you remember this that this some this was something that i took more time to solve last time or i couldn't solve last time right so it's a good thing to go across those questions and uh, go through those questions and try solving them again right without looking at the questions uh, right so that's a good practice going through the revision booklets and spotting parts which uh like which you need uh, like which you need to solve again and at the same time also spotting parts uh where you like still maybe lack some amount of uh, theory understanding or conceptual understanding yeah then it is a good thing to utilize what we have here called doubt classes uh like uh yeah, participate in them and try to understand what actually uh, that concept is yeah because if you see that you are struggling consistently with a particular thing you surely need to pay more attention to it right so try to spot those things yeah and obviously sol solving past papers are also important so these two things can go hand in hand it is not that they are exclusive of each other once you are done with that you start with the other you can like once you're done with the revision booklets you can uh, uh, like keep doing them kind of simultaneously right uh, okay, what computer skills does one should know in an order to while looking for a job? Uh, this is so like uh, now that your uh, CS and CM papers already cover Excel and R, um, that is a good package to start off with as such. But at the end of the day, uh, like job uh, like job providers are looking for as many skills as you can provide to them, right? For example, if they have a, a CV with more computer skills, they might go over uh, uh, like uh, and prefer that provided everything else is the same, right? Uh, so having computer skills such as basic understanding of SQL, basic understanding of, say, uh, Python is a bit plus, right? Uh, it helps them to, uh, like, more than the knowledge, it helps them to understand whether you are a learner or not, right? Whether you have engaged yourself in learning something new uh, every now and then, right? Uh, so having those skills certainly, uh, uh, like, helps you to stand out right uh, but again like while uh, like a month before the exam just focus on where you're uh, headed right on that paper right um, Sanjana for the pre-exam material you have the paper B exam material so there's some material that uh, they send in before the exam I don't remember like how many days before the exam but uh, so it is pre-material for R so there's some day remember that we have some exercises in our R where you have .txt.csv files which need to be used uh, during the course of solving those exercises. So if there are any such data files that need to be used while solving that exam paper, that's the pre-material, yeah? Um, I think Shivangi ma'am would be more equipped to answer questions about the preferred calculator. Uh, I remember using uh, Shivangi, are you around? Cool. So now uh, you can use, there is no limitation on the type of lab, uh, 
calculator. We used to use FX ES82 plus, but now mm -hmm. we can use any lab, uh, calculator. There is no restriction as such because it's open mm -hmm. book now. Right. right. So uh, one thing, uh, yeah, so these questions, you can take it up. Siddharth, you can proceed ahead and you can tell us more in details about the CS1B. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, cool. In that case, uh, I'll do something. I'll bring up my screen. Uh, let me know y'all when you uh, see my screen. Akshay, no, please no. Uh, so uh, don't make anyone set aside yourself. You are the one who is going to type that out on an MS Word uh, paper, uh, question paper. While you're solving, uh, like for, pra for a usual practice, so as to say, uh, you might, like, uh, like because it's quicker to solve on uh, pen and paper, you can choose to do that. But yeah, for exams, you are the one who is going to type. You'll have to directly type it most probably that day as well. Uh, and uh, sorry, I'll, is my screen visible, guys? Yes, it's visible. Yes. yes. Sorry, I think it flipped. Uh, cool. Yeah, now it's visible. Yeah, now it's visible. Uh, so today's 10th August. You have almost a month left for the exams, right? So again, key things to remember. Um, if you are like somewhere like uh, consistent with where the live classes are going right now, make sure you're attending the regular classes, yeah? Because uh, going forward, we'll have classes every day. Uh, we'll try to cover both paper A and paper B in both of these classes, yeah? And we'll make sure that we get to a point uh, where we are comfortable with the syllabus uh, well ahead of the exams, right? Second thing to keep in mind, self-study, practice, uh, both theory and practicals. Make sure you're finding out time for both of them. Uh, like different, like what I suggest to people is try find, uh, uh, try to find out time to practice both of these things on a daily basis right um doubt solving if you have any doubts at any point in time make sure you're marking them get in the next class ask those doubts yeah given your exams are online you need to type it out on word a very crucial and integral part is making sure you're practicing typing out uh your answers as well right so even if you know everything you might score 100 but if you are not good with typing that might uh, keep you back right so um Make sure you're practicing typing somewhere or the other. It might be a couple of papers uh, every week, right? It might be something more than that. You need to assess where you're standing with respect vis-a-vis -vis the uh, ideal state, right? Whether you're able to solve the entire paper or not. If you're not, then you, to, you need to devote more time to it, right? Um, exam settings, you need to be comfortable with how uh, like solving a paper during exams looks like right a lot of us get nerves while solving like while sitting during exams so making sure you are going ahead for enough mocks right um, you are getting them evaluated very well right and understand where you are falling up behind what are your weaknesses so that you can improve on them being very consistent regularly um, like like if you've made a uh, tight schedule if you've made a tight plan uh, like it's as good as your uh, as uh, it's as good as how how, go, how consistent you are with it, right? Uh, so make sure you're consistent with it, and finally be crystal clear with concepts, right? So if even like the institute has a habit of throwing maybe innovative questions at you, yeah. If you're good with concepts, no matter what the question is, if you know the underlying first principle concept, uh, you can make a good attempt at it, right? Um, so be very clear with your concepts. Yeah. So yeah, talking about what the next 15 days or next 15, uh, 20 days have in the hold for us. Uh, what we've planned right now is in a, uh, like in a batch two classes, we are at a junction where we have just completed what uh, confidence intervals. Yeah. Uh, and hypothesis testing in paper A. Yeah. And uh, we are at a junction in paper B where we have only completed, I think, conditional expectations. Right. Uh, so in paper B, we are quite in a position which uh, someone was describing that we are uh, like towards the starting of our syllabus, right? And in paper A, although we've gotten to a comfortable point, like maybe we've reached hypothesis testing, we still have a long way to go, right? Uh, there, that's, it's almost 50% of the syllabus left, correct? So 
what we have created is uh, a schedule where we'll follow uh, that will follow for the next 20 days basically what we have planned is that we'll have two hours of regular classes every day now yeah uh, we'll try to devote it uh, like split it between paper a and paper b yeah and we'll uh, like cover theory portions uh, related to the following topics so we plan to get ahead with correlation regression have a breather for say doubts and uh, have a breather for doubts and in the meanwhile we'll also proceed with paper b and try to catch up to the speed in paper a right and then we'll move to the very last portion of our syllabus uh, where we will do glm and vision right and at the end of the month we'll still have time to cover say whatever topics if left, left in between and uh, address any doubts as well right at the same time in paper b we intend to we aim to uh, like uh, get ahead with our syllabus right and try to complete all the topics by 29th of august yeah so that's something that we had in mind we again started with a vision that we wanted to get done with our syllabus including doubts by end of this month uh, so uh, we created this particular thing where we want now to have regular classes every day for the next 20 days uh, we'll try our very best to uh, follow this yeah give two hours every day uh, whatever day of the week it might be yeah and uh, if we at any point of time find we are lagging behind our own schedule we'll try to add classes to it as well yeah and uh, at the same time uh, for you guys if you are say giving two hours out of your day these classes make sure you're utilizing them to the fullest make sure that whatever is being taught at uh, during the point during these classes you are completely able to understand them so that when you get back to self studies to solving say uh, booklet questions on the same uh, topic uh, you don't have any conceptual uh, like uh, inconsistency or confusions as such it should be a matter of solve getting to understand the type of questions that are coming in right um, yeah open to questions open to any doubts that you all might ha have but uh, like this is what we plan for the next 20 15 20 days Yeah. Uh, Shivangi, if you wanted to jump in, jump in and talk anything about, uh, like, add anything to this. Um, no, Siddharth, I don't want to add anything extra. Mm -hmm. I think you have covered most of the things here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so you can go ahead, take a few questions which we have in the chat boxes there. Sure. So talking about, uh, yeah, talking about the um, IA exams, you have, say, September, October, November, three months left to it, right? Uh, so you need to, again, be sure, given that it's going to be MCQ, right? Uh, so you need to be sure that you are completely clear with whatever questions are, are like whatever concepts you are uh, studying, right? Uh, specifically with the IA exam papers, you need to be completely clear with whatever concepts that are coming in right uh what like for example if if i think about the uh, cs1 syllabus it can be broadly thought of as probability right then you have something related to cld and conditional in between then you have ci and confidence interval uh then you have a uh, sorry confidence interval and hypothesis then you have a regression related thing regret glm can be thought of as an extension of regression and finally you have Bayesian. So the entire thing can be divided into six broad topics, right? Which is basically your six broad booklets as well, yeah? So you need to be sure that you are able to make connections as to what is happening in every part of the syllabus, yeah? And then understand what is what is it that you are trying to do everywhere and how we are doing it, right? What and how, like what are we doing it and how are we going, uh, how are we going about doing the same, right? So once you're clear with those things, then it becomes easier to solve questions, right? Uh, so like given that you have like sufficient amount of time to the November 24 exams, uh, it should be a good strategy to maybe take a pause, try to understand what you've studied till now, make sure you're very well versed with it. You don't have any doubts, yeah? 
and then get ahead with the rest of the syllabus. And then uh, like at every point in time, you can make sure that uh, you, you, you're quite clear with what is being taught, right? Uh, so that is the main crux of uh, like, uh, like the I and around 24 attempt. Uh, when I talk about paper B, how to practice CS1 paper B, I'll again say, go through the exercises, yeah? Uh, like all the exercises that are there in the CS1B exercises PDF, right? Be sure that you are very well versed with each of those exercises, yeah? Because at the end of the day, those are the exercises from which, like, uh, like those are the functions which have been introduced in the exercises from which your questions will be uh, like, uh, like modeled, right? So you need to be very well versed with all those functions, the users of those functions, uh, like what are the broad topics that they are getting used, right? Uh, be sure that you are very well clear uh, with different functions that look very alike, right? So that there might be a couple of functions here and there that look quite similar, that have a similar working, but uh, they are at the end of the day doing two different things. So be very clear with such things, yeah? Make sure you don't have any doubts there. Uh, and once you are good with that, uh, you can get to solving papers, right? Uh, so uh, like that's that's the crux for paper B that you need to be sure that you are solving all exercises, you're crystal clear with them, and then solving your assignments and mocks and past papers. Uh, Akshay, like what we usually do is if an exact value is not available, we apply interpolation and get that value out, right? You can mention the surrounding, like uh, for interpolation, you would have used a couple of values, right? So you can uh, write about those two values in your theory paper that you have picked up those values from your paper uh, from this page, and then you can uh, interpolate and find out the required value. Yeah, so Vanisha, these exercises that I'm talking about right here, is not are not exam questions yeah they are basically uh, intended or aimed to help you understand what functions can come in during the exams what functions can be used during the exams so they are modeled in a way to help you understand they're not modeled in a way so as to like be in an exam format right uh, so it will be a good practice here to use these exercises as a building block to make sure now you're clear with all the functions, how they're getting used, right? And once you are clear with them, then you get to a phase where you solve question papers, right? That's when you'll understand how uh, like questions come in for exams, right? And uh, like we started with, I think, uh, practical papers back in 2019. So now you have four to five years uh, worth of question papers, right? And that's a lot to be very honest. Um, I remember giving my exam in 2019 or 2020, right? Um, we just had a couple of uh, paper B uh, attempts to look back to, right? So you all have a big repository of papers that you can refer to. So keep practicing that, right? Uh, even if you practice two or three papers a week, that will land up you in a situation where you've practiced all of them, right? Um, and you get an understanding of how exam question papers are uh, uh, are meant to look like, right? So you can prepare yourself for the same as well. Like, and the way to prepare yourself is just keep going in those question papers. Uh, again, while solving question papers, if you're finding that this question was particularly tricky, uh, it it might, uh, like, if, if this comes in for the exam, this might boggle me, then do it again, right? Take a two, after two days, get back to that question. Try to solve that again. Try to understand how the institute is modeling that question. Like, what is it that they're trying to target? Right? You need to crack. You need to be able to understand that uh, according to your point of view and help you uh, to get ahead with it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Again, uh, for mocks, what I have always uh, like uh, have told is. Like wherever you are at, whatever point of syllabus you are at, it's good to give a mock, right? Uh, like it might be possible that you are not very well ahead with your syllabus, right? But uh, like at the end of the day, 
your these mocks are helping you to understand what are your weak points so for example if you're at correlation today in another five to six days you can get to a point where you've done linear regression and glm as well right so you'll effectively only be left with sebation statistics when you're giving the mock right that is what 20 percent of the syllabus so if you know 80 percent of the syllabus and you're giving the mock well and good even if you know less than 80 percent it's good it's not bad right because up to that point in the syllabus you'll be able to understand where what are your weaknesses where, uh, where what are the points where you are maybe getting stuck in the exam and you might need to revisit them right uh Akshay, so like i'll tell you like there's no clear instruction for the institute as well that taking from the r is uh, wrong or right uh but I'll, i can tell you what has happened in the past papers yeah um they've adopted that particular approach for finding out t values yeah and we don't want to get unnecessarily penalized for things that we are not sure about right we don't want to take such kinds of risks during exams right we want to be completely safe we want to um follow what's uh like follow uh, things with complete integrity and make sure we are doing the right thing yeah yeah teach you how to study deeply and fast at the same time um to be very honest i don't have a very clear answer for this uh like you like these are trade offs right uh, when you try to be very fast like if you try to fit in like two hours of study in a one hour study you are bound to miss a few things right instead of that uh give the time like make sure you're giving the time that a topic really requires you to give that uh, like uh, so for example if there's a topic that requires two amounts two hours worth of effort give two hours of uh, hours worth of effort to it right there's no point rushing through things yeah uh, so give uh, a topic the time that it deserves yeah but at the same time don't overspend time as well right and what is the ideal amount of time there's nothing written in uh, black and white yeah so you have like it's it's about your pace of learning it's about how good you are able to understand a particular topic after spending some amount of time on it right uh, so there's no ideal amount of time as such yeah different amount uh, like different individuals can take different amounts of time and that's completely okay right it's just that you might have to put extra hours at the end of the day but if you're able to produce a better output or a, as good output it's all good yeah so can i ask a question sure so yeah like uh my uh, question is that how should we like actually start uh like start practicing typing for example i will give you my example i have completed my math till glm and uh, mm -hmm. i'm i've completed my paper b till uh, regression right yeah, yeah. i'm so yeah. i'm left with my booklets and x assignments yeah. So right. these booklets, should I practice it with typing or I should, because practicing booklets with typing, right. I think can be time consuming. So, right. so I'll tell you Ara what I did. Um, and do please keep in mind that I had a fairly quick typing speed when I was giving the, when I started preparing with it, right? When I say a fairly quick typing speed, I don't mean with mathematical symbols. It was just with normal words, right? Uh, so what i adopted at that point in time was uh solving uh booklets on pen and paper yeah because i again needed to be really quick with them right uh, like things that i can solve in two lines i just wanted to get done with it say a booklet into a couple of days and then move to the next one be really quick with it in a sense right not to overspend time on anything and then at the same time i made sure that i was solving papers regularly yeah maybe attempting one paper or two papers a week and those papers i used to always type them out right so uh so during that time i got into a habit of typing mathematical symbols as well yeah uh, it further helped me to increase my typing speed and the most important thing that i feel that uh, we all tend to ignore is the practice of thinking while typing right because we've been uh, in such environments that when we write on pen and paper is that when we engage our minds, right? Is that we think and uh, like uh, and are able to solve it, right, on the go. Uh, you need to get into the habit of doing the same while you're typing, right? So for doing that, I found out was solve. I found out that solving question papers was the right way for me. Yeah. But however, 
if you're already say low on typing speed right you you would know your shortcomings at the end of the day then it might be a good idea to say solve 20 percent of the booklet or 30 percent of the booklet on word as well yeah but at the same time recognizing that say i have spent 20 percent or the 30 percent of my allocated time towards uh, uh solving the booklets on word let's get switched to pen and paper and let's get done with it uh so you need to be very judicial while using your time right because this cannot be an excuse at the end of the day that because i was typing i could complete only 40 percent of what i targeted right you need to be able to split your time very judiciously between what all all that you're doing right but for typing what i found incredibly useful was solving papers on word right uh, so i made it a point that none of the papers that i solved were on pen and paper i solved all papers on word and that really helped me to cross the line on typing at least yeah thank you sir thank you cool. i think we've addressed most of the questions um Simran, uh, like, again, there's no straight answer to this, right? Uh, you, like, it's 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 a habit at the end of the day, right? And to be very honest, it's a difficult habit to ease. And no one's perfect at it, right? Uh, you have to get into a habit of utilizing the time more efficiently. Maybe by, like, uh, what has worked for me is, like, removing distractions, right? Uh, I make sure that while I'm studying, I switch off the mobile data off my phone and just focus on that, right? And that works for me because, uh, like, uh, I remember even back in college, I used to do that maybe, uh, like, while I'm studying for the two hours, three hours, I didn't turn on my internet, right? That worked for me. So, uh, and that helped me to utilize more of the time, right? I'm not saying that's a short, short thing to go, right? Uh, you need to be able to actually study during that time as well, yeah? So, like, whatever works for you, to be very honest, you need to, at the end of the day, be really disciplined, be really consistent. Yeah. Uh, very subjective words. Uh, but yeah, those are the key things. Okay. Regarding internships, yeah, you can, uh, like, for that matter, you can start your internships after clearing, uh, like, any paper, right? given you get an internship yeah so if you're able to get one internship that uh, say suits your uh, how should i put it career goals and vision it's good to get into an internship after a couple of papers no surrender typing practice is no longer required for ms word right uh, for IS students so you you definitely can uh, skip that out yeah cool i guess we've covered uh, quite a lot of questions, yeah. Um, Moksha, I didn't really get your question as such, uh, including in questions, including assumptions. Like, like as long as you're like for table book for things that we are picking out of the tables book, right? We do write from page number this of the tables book. This is the formula that we've picked up, right? Uh, apart from that, when you are like writing out. Uh, Assumptions in the sense, like for examples, I remember assumptions in confidence interval hypothesis testing. But yeah, um, those are things that you don't refer out of the uh, of, out of the material as such. And I don't think in CS1, in any way, you're directly referring from the material as such. So you need not directly uh, uh, like do that, right? Um, use keyboard notation or equation editor. We make a mix of both. Uh, the institute does not require to use equation editor. It sticks to uh, keyboard notations, right? I use whatever I found uh, easier for me to use at a given point in time, easy and quicker for me to use, right? If you think you can be really quick with a particular thing, you are able to understand that very well, go ahead, use that. But you need to be both of them, accurate, quick, yeah? Tanishka, you're in a very good place. Don't worry about it. Uh, so what you need to do is basically make sure that you're making a schedule for yourself, right? Uh, and that basically is solving question papers, yeah? And getting back to the points where you uh, 
where you think you have you're you're still not good enough, right? Or where you got stuck the first time, right? So make sure you're getting back to those questions regularly and you are solving papers on a regular basis. And while you're solving papers, it just doesn't mean you solve that paper, the papers finish, right? Once you solve that paper, get back to that paper, have a look at where you got stuck again. And those are the key places that you need to revisit as well, right? So be very sure with that. Yeah. And at the same time, focus on paper B, right? Uh, make sure you're done with the, uh, I, I hope when you say complete syllabus, you're saying done with paper B exercises as well. And then uh, look at past papers as much as possible, right? Yeah, cool. I guess we've covered almost all questions. Um, if there's um, nothing else, then we might close the session as well. Uh, Shivang, give you another call. Let's have a quick look. Skip a second. Ayushi, I don't think there's anything that can be directly copied from the code reading material. But again, if there is something I won't uh, like recommend at all copying from the code reading material, any portion of the syllabus, write it in your own words. You might write after writing in your own words that I've referred from the code reading material on page number this, but don't copy anything. Yeah, it's a like a big no-no which they have written in the examination handbook as well. Don't copy anything from the material directly. Yeah. Cool. I think that's all. Uh, Shivangiri, if you had any last words about this, uh, call. Just let me do a quick check. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I guess that's about the session, guys. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining in. Uh, hope that we get done with the syllabus in the next 15, 20 days. Yeah. Uh, really looking forward to it. Um, and let's try our best to ace this session out. Yeah, cool. Best of luck. Goodbye.